The Antikythera Mechanism Discovered in 1901 off a Greek island, the Antikythera Mechanism looked like a lump of bronze until X-rays revealed dozens of intricate gears inside. Dating back to around 100 BCE, this corroded artifact turned out to be the world's first known analog computer, built over 1,500 years before similar precision appeared in Europe. Its complexity shocked historians because nothing comparable should have existed in the ancient world. Crafted likely in Rhodes, the mechanism used at least 30 bronze gears to calculate the positions of the sun, moon, and planets. It could predict eclipses, track lunar phases, and even display the timing of ancient Olympic Games inscriptions in Greek, describe astronomical cycles like the Metonic and Saros, which govern lunar calendars and eclipses. Modern CT scans showed the gearing ratios precisely match celestial movements. Researchers believe it was built by followers of Hipparchus, the famed Greek astronomer. The device's engineering vanished after the Roman era and wouldn't re-emerge until medieval clockmaking. What survived beneath the sea proved that ancient Greek science had reached a level of mechanical sophistication sophistication no one imagined possible, the Baghdad Battery. In 1938, German archaeologist Wilhelm Koenig found a clay jar near Baghdad containing a copper cylinder and an iron rod, all sealed with asphalt. Dated to around 200 BCE, it later became known as the Baghdad Battery, and it raised a bizarre question. Did ancient Mesopotamians accidentally invent electricity? The jar's design mirrors a simple galvanic cell. When filled with vinegar or lemon juice, it can generate about one volt of current. Some researchers proposed it might have been used for electro plating jewelry or religious rituals. Others argue it was simply a storage vessel for scrolls or papyrus, and the metal parts served no electrical function. Tests by museum scientists and engineers in the 1930s and 1970s confirmed that replicas could produce measurable voltage. However, no wires, conductors, or applications have ever been found nearby. Today, most archaeologists view it as an accidental prototype rather than an intentional battery. Whether primitive experiment or coincidence, it stands as one of archaeology's most puzzling artifacts, a device that might have sparked before electricity had a name. Roman concrete. When modern engineers cracked open ancient Roman harbor walls, they found something impossible. The concrete was still healing itself after 2,000 years underwater. Roman concrete, or Opus Cementicium, turned out to be far more durable than anything built until the 20th century. The secret lay in the mix. Volcanic ash from Pozzuoli near Naples, lime, seawater, and stones. Unlike modern cement, the Romans didn't fully mix their lime. Instead, they left tiny white chunks known as lime clasts. When cracks formed, rain or seawater reacted with those clasts, triggering a chemical process that created new calcium carbonate and sealed the gaps. Essentially, it was self-healing concrete. Samples taken from Roman piers like Portus Cassanus showed microscopic crystal growth that strengthened over time. Modern scientists at MIT recreated the recipe in 2023 and proved its self-repairing mechanism. The formula's rediscovery could revolutionize modern construction, a reminder that ancient builders, guided by observation rather than chemistry degrees, mastered sustainability millennia ago. The light Lycurgus Cup. At first glance, the Lycurgus Cup looks like an ornate Roman glass goblet until light hits it. Then it changes color from jade green to deep crimson, a transformation scientists didn't understand until the 20th century created in the 4th century CE. The cup demonstrates a phenomenon now called dichroic glass, achieved through nanotechnology long before the word existed. Craftsmen embedded particles of gold and silver, each less than one thousandth the width of a human hair, into molten glass. These nanoparticles scattered light differently depending on its direction. Trans transmitted light made the cup glow red, while reflected light made it appear green. The effect wasn't decorative accident, it was deliberate optical engineering. The cup depicts the myth of King Lycurgus entangled in vines, symbolizing divine punishment. Its artistry suggested imperial ownership, possibly for ritual display. Today it's housed in the British Museum and studied by material scientists who found the same optical principles later used in fiber optics and sensors. The Lycurgus cup remains the world's earliest known example of nanophotonic craftsmanship, 1,600 years ahead of its time. The Pyramid's Precision Built around 2560 BCE, the Great Pyramid of Giza still stuns engineers for one reason. Its alignment with true north is more accurate than that of many modern structures. The pyramid deviates by just one fifteenth of a degree, an error smaller than the width of a finger over its 755-foot base. How Bronze Age builders achieved such precision without compasses or modern surveying tools remains one of archaeology's greatest puzzles. Researchers believe the Egyptians used the stars to find true north, specifically tracking the rotation of Kochab and Mazar, two stars in Ursa Major. By observing their alignment during specific seasons, they could fix true north within fractions of a degree. The pyramid's base was then squared with sighting rods and plumb bobs and carefully leveled trenches filled with water. Each limestone block weighed up to 80 tons, yet the structure's sides vary in length by less than two inches. Satellite mapping confirms its placement is almost perfectly cardinal. While theories about lost technologies persist, evidence points to exceptional astronomical knowledge, mathematical rigor, and centuries of cumulative building experience.
all achieved with simple tools and astonishing discipline. The Incan Stone Walls High in the Andes, the walls of Cusco and Saxai Huaman fit together with such precision that not even a razor blade can slip between their stones. Built by the Inca around the 15th century, these structures used no mortar or iron tools, yet have survived earthquakes that toppled Spanish colonial buildings centuries later. The builders shaped massive andesite and limestone blocks, some weighing over 300 tons, by repeatedly pounding them with harder stones and polishing the surfaces until they locked together. The stones' irregular shapes weren't flaws, and they were intentional interlocking designs that distributed seismic stress. When tremors hit, the walls flex instead of fracturing. Modern engineers studying Cusco's walls found microscopic abrasion marks consistent with long, patient shaping rather than cutting tools. Despite countless theories about lost technology or alien aid, the truth is more impressive. A civilization that understood geometry, gravity, and natural balance so well that their cities still stand, stone upon stone after 500 years of earthquakes and rain. The Damascus Steel Blades between the 11th and 17th centuries, warriors prized Damascus steel blades for a reason. They could slice silk in midair, bend without breaking, and keep a razor edge through battle. Yet when the secret died out in the 1700s, so did the recipe. Only modern microscopy revealed why these swords seemed almost supernatural. True Damascus blades were forged from Wootz steel imported from India. This metal contained traces of tungsten, vanadium, and carbon, elements that, when heated and cooled in exact cycles, formed microscopic carbon nanotube-like patterns. These structures, known as Damascus bands, gave the blades their swirling appearance and strength. Blacksmiths achieved this by instinct, not chemistry. They controlled temperature and impurities through touch, color, and experience. When European industrial steelmaking replaced traditional smelting, the unique Wootz ingots disappeared, and with them, the Damascus process. Today, scientists have recreated similar microstructures in labs, proving the ancient smiths had unknowingly mastered nanostructured metallurgy, centuries before microscopes could even see it. The Noptiplia Stone Circle Before Stonehenge, before written history, a circle of stones rose in the Nubian desert of southern Egypt. Known as Nabta Playa, it dates to around 4,800 BCE over 2,000 years older than Britain's famous monument. What makes it extraordinary is its astronomical precision. Archaeologists discovered that several stones align with the rising of Sirius in the summer solstice sun, marking the start of the monsoon season. The site includes ceremonial mounds, cattle burials, and hearths, suggesting it was both an observatory and a ritual center for early pastoral societies. Its builders were likely nomadic herders, tracking celestial cycles to predict rainfall in an unforgiving climate. The circle's placement demonstrates a sophisticated grasp of astronomy and geometry at a time when agriculture was still emerging along the Nile later Egyptian temple alignments, including those at Karnak followed similar solar principles, implying Nabta Playa was the prototype for the world's first cosmic architecture. The Phaistos Disk Unearthed in 1908 on the island of Crete, the Phaistos disk looks like a simple piece of pottery until you notice its symbols. Spiraling from edge to center are 242 stamped impressions forming 45 unique signs, all pressed into wet clay before firing. Dated to around 1700 BCE, it may represent the earliest known example of movable type printing. Each symbol was pressed with pre-made stamps rather than carved, meaning the creator used a set of reusable characters, a printing concept that wouldn't resurface until Gutenberg's press 3000 years later. The signs include human figures, tools, and geometric shapes, but their meaning remains undeciphered. Found in the ruins of the Minoan Palace at Phaistos, the disk likely held ceremonial or administrative significance. No other object like it has ever been found, deepening its mystery. Linguists have proposed dozens of translations from hymns to legal codes, but without a bilingual key, its message is lost. Still, the Phaistos disk stands as a technological anomaly, proof that the idea of printed symbols existed long before recorded history admitted it. The Saksai Huaman Fortress. Towering over the city of Cusco at 12,000 feet, the fortress of Saksai Huaman remains one of the greatest architectural achievements of the Inca Empire built in the 15th century. It consists of three terraced walls stretching over 1,500 feet, with interlocking stone blocks weighing up to 350 tons each. What amazes engineers isn't just the size, it's the method. The Incas shaped each block individually, grinding it against neighboring stones until the seams fit so tightly that even modern tools can't slip between them. The zigzag wall design acted as a built-in shock absorber, diffusing seismic energy and preventing collapse during earthquakes. Spanish chroniclers recorded that tens of thousands of workers took decades to complete it, using bronze chisels, rope, and sheer manpower. Despite centuries of erosion, invasion, and natural disasters, Saksai Huaman still stands with its stones locked in silent precision, a fortress built by observation, patience, and unmatched craftsmanship at the edge of the world. The Dendera Light Bulb
Carved on the walls of the Hathor Temple in Dendera, Egypt, a relief shows what appears to be a long glass bulb connected to a cable and power source. To modern eyes, it looks strikingly similar to a 19th century electric lamp. The carving dates to around 50 BCE, yet the resemblance has fueled decades of debate over whether ancient Egyptians possessed electrical technology. The so-called bulb actually depicts a lotus flower containing a snake, symbolizing creation and energy in Egyptian mythology. The cable beneath is a stylized stem, connecting to a pillar representing the god Dijed, a symbol of stability and life force. However, when physicists built scale replicas of the relief's geometry and applied low voltage, they found the shape could, in theory, function as a crude gas discharge tube, producing faint light similar to a neon glow. Most Egyptologists reject the electrical theory, pointing to the absence of wires, insulation, or generators in any tomb or temple. Still, the Dendera relief remains one of history's most visually compelling coincidences, a symbolic artwork that perfectly mimics technology invented two millennia later, the Shroud of Turin imaging process. Few relics have drawn as much scrutiny as the Shroud of Turin, a 14-foot linen cloth imprinted with the faint image of a man's body and face. First recorded in 1354 CE in France, the Shroud was long believed to be the burial cloth of Jesus. But what baffles scientists isn't its legend, it's the image itself. The image behaves like a photographic negative with light and dark values reversed. When photographed in 1898, its details appeared startlingly lifelike. Later analysis showed the coloring comes only from the cloth's outermost fibers, a surface effect less than one-fifth the thickness of a human hair. No pigments, dyes, or brush marks exist. Radiocarbon tests in 1988 dated the fabric to the medieval era, yet no one has replicated its image-forming process. Theories range from chemical reactions and thermal radiation to short-burst ultraviolet energy. Regardless Regardless of belief, the shroud remains a scientific enigma, a centuries-old artifact whose image formation still defies full explanation.